Hey ya, I'm Valen from Mischief of Mice. Welcome to another Bit by Bit on Witchery, a Minecraft mod by MNF. As usual, I'll post some helpful links in the description, so let's begin. And peaky has got a little something today. What you got there? Seer stone. Well, this is part of today's agenda. How to get a coven, more circle magic, making and using a seer stone, which I have here. So, shall we begin? Okay, so, first things first, in here, perform at night. <laughs> so, you'll want to get yourself a quartz sphere, a piece of obsidian, and some happenstance oil. Now, recipe for this is quite simple, just some blocks of quartz and uh, regular quartz around glass. The obsidian, of course, is just obsidian. But the happenstance oil is a little more complex. Golden carrot, redstone soup, potion of night vision, a spider eye, mandrake root, and an eye of ender. But... Put all those down together here. Oops, I forgot. Nighttime. Let's do that again. There we go. And we get ourselves a seer stone. Let me make it day again. So, how this works. Um, to start off with, it will call witches from your coven. Now, if you have a familiar little guy over there, then you actually can start getting a coven. Before then, the witches will ignore you and taunt you like uh, they did in earlier episodes. But uh, right now, I think I've got a full coven at the moment. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I can actually use this to call my coven. Now it draws back like a boat. So one thing you got to be aware of is that if you're up on a high ledge and you try summoning these guys, they may end up falling to their death. So make sure it's a safe place. If you lose somebody in your coven, like let's say Lenora here. I don't like Lenora. Goodbye. Oh no. Now I have one less person in my coven. Well, you can actually get another one. You just recruit another witch and you're good to go. Of course, it has to be one of the good witches that don't uh, try poisoning you. But that is one thing. Now, by summoning them, they are similar to uh, friendly entities that will uh, basically hurt enemies that you hurt or that are hurting you, so they can fight on your behalf. But be careful, they will throw potions, often random potions. Um, usually poison, sometimes slow, so you just got to be careful. They will poison themselves, but they also will heal. Um, and over time, they will eventually teleport away until you summon them again. Now, the other reason to summon them is to uh, have them help you out with rituals, uh, rites, and other uh, circle magic or even um, cauldron magic. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind that you will want to summon them before you cast something that is required for that. Um, it should actually say in here if it requires a coven member for the recipe or multiples. Um, to do this, you simply talk to one of them. Okay, and you have to solve their riddle. Often they will require an item, sometimes they need you to uh, defeat an enemy, or several items. Oops, I talked to her already. Let's see, let's talk to this one here. Yeah, so she wants a necromantic stone. This one here wants a um, uh, crystal ball, which is very similar to, making, to a seer stone. It's just um, a gold bar instead of an, a piece of obsidian. Um, but that's how you obtain a coven. Not too bad. I believe you can have a maximum of six recruits plus you default with uh, uh, one. If you watch here I will summon my coven again. And I know that it's one short now, but... Okay, they're all here. And let's see. Okay, well, that was wrong. There's just five. But I believe the maximum is six. Uh, might be seven under certain circumstances, but anyway, that's about it for now. Let's go on to the next item. Okay, I've got another rite here that is uh, of some interest here. Rite of Summoning, and this summons uh, the last familiar I talked about in the previous uh, familiar episode. And this is a spectral familiar. Looks like a little pig. So, ingredients are drop a luck, raw pork chop, Gold ingot, whoops, don't know why that didn't want to stay, and an Arathana. 
then you want to have yourself preferably a diamond I think would be more appropriate and whatever you want this spectral familiar here to find you right click with it and if you notice it will make a noise and he'll change color he consumes it and then he finds any if it's within the area now actually I've already done this uh, ritual a couple times in this spot so I don't think there are any diamonds actually nearby so let me try oh, funny I've already got a pig in there Let's see if I can actually put him over here yeah doesn't really work like that Gold. Aha! Finally. Let's dig down. Aha! Gold! Okay. So, the idea is with the spectral familiar. He's not perfect, and if you try having him search for the same thing too often, he will just consume it. But when he finds it, he should turn back to his old shape, sit down and make a noise, like probably a little oink or something like that. But you see how it works now. It's just only reliable for the first few times, or a few different uh, resources uh, like redstone, coal, lapis. I think you might be able to use it on a few other things like coal and iron as well. But there you go, spectral familiar. Bye. <gasps> the right of necromancy. How to make it here? Simple seven by seven. Tombstone, bone, rotten flesh, wood, ash, iron, sword, spectral dust, which you can get from uh, trading by with creatures, as I showed you previously, or by killing that little uh, spectral pig that showed up. Uh, alt power for a thousand. So let's perform this one. Oh, and of course, at night. You perform this around here, and it will take a charge or a, a tune stone, turn it into a necromantic stone, and that's how you can use it to control the undead, as I've shown you in a previous episode. But that was just a quick aside there. Now back to other stuff. The rite of sanctity. Monsters cannot enter the circle, and it lasts indefinitely, provided that you can keep up with the power uh, requisite of the altar. So simple enough. Whoops. I gotta put these down here and add this. Now this only affects monsters. So let's spawn us some monsters. And there we go. That was a little too far away. But they shouldn't be able to enter the white circle here. Once again, it's similar to that whole uh, grotesque. Uh, potion, but yeah, you get the idea. I should mention that it will continue until it either runs out of power, which in this case it's not going to because I've got it really charging up good, um, or you turn it off. To turn it off, you just hit right click, and the red particles disappear, and the right ends. All right, next, the right of imprisonment. Monsters cannot leave the circle, and it lasts as long as you have power that will su be supplied to it. Slime ball of redstone, simple 7x7 seven seven circle. Let's try this out here. While that's doing its thing, I'm going to get more spiders. Let's spawn one in there, and let's make it nighttime. And he wants to get me really bad, but he can't. He's held in there. Now, of course, I can go in there, and then he can hit me. But you get the idea. All right, the next one is the right of protection. This is kind of cool. Uh, it, it's a lot more protective than the last one, where it actually 
creates an impenetrable dome to monsters, so you can still pass through it. Last indefinitely, provided you can keep up with the upkeep. Uh, obsidian redstone and a bound waystone allows you to choose a location for it to work. So, for instance, um, this location here is where I have these bound waystones currently linked to. And we are going to go way back over here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of mess that I made on the landscape over there. But this is where we're going to perform this. So let's see, we just need one of those, one of those, and one of these. And what this does is it allows you to put the dome up while this one is maintaining it. And then you could do another right, like summon a demon on that circle. And you can pass through there. So let's do this. Ah, so there we go. I need a large coven. So let me, that is quite a distance actually, get my coven summoned. I need, there we go. So. All right, they're all here. Click. And they do their thing. And apparently it is acceptable. So let's go have a look. And there you have it. There is a visible dome here that I can pass through. But monsters cannot, and they cannot shoot through either. I don't have my demon with me. Let me go back and get him. And we're just going to place him down right here. Now I am in a safe game mode, so he's not going to be upset with me, but there. Now I'm in regular game mode. He looks at me, but he doesn't pursue me at all. So it's like these walls actually exist for him. If I stick my head in, he's going to try coming at me which it still may allow you to trade with him. Uh, another cool thing is that if you break these, let's see if I can actually, yeah, see it won't even let me do it with, uh, with these. Even in creative, if you break one of these blocks, it will actually regenerate itself on the next uh, tick of uh, being used. So these are really cool. Uh, having like a couple of, um, circles next to each other with one altar. You could have one circle doing the upkeep for this and another circle performing some other rite that you would like. Keeping him in his little glass cage or whatever. Another version of the rite of protection is to conjure a dome similar to the last one, but it's an 11 by 11 and it lasts indefinitely and it's impenetrable to all. Uh, and that's a little bit more expensive to upkeep once again, you can use a bound waystone, so you could feasibly try and trap your friends with it if you're uh, sneaky about it. But now there also is one more right of protection, and that is to conjure an impenetrable dome for just 60 seconds. So this one would be more of like a practical, jo uh, practical joke, perhaps. But um, it's just obsidian and an attuned stone. It does not allow you the uh, bound stone so that you can't just do it in a certain area. And just a little 7x7, seven seven. so therefore you could lock something up for one minute if you so desired. All right, the next one, a little more interesting, a rite of icy expansion. Uh, that's where you make a icy sphere. We're going to try this, but we do need coven members for it. It's a 7x7 seven seven circle with a diamond sword, frozen heart, and an attuned stone that's charged. Frozen heart isn't too bad. It's just an icy needle, creeper heart, and a gas tear together. So... We place these items down, and let me summon my coven. Everybody here? There we go. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> And there you go. You got yourself an icy sphere. Instant shelter, house, uh, however you want to do it. 
as I'm in creative, I don't think these will create, uh, there we go, <laughs> uh, water. But there there you go, uh, instant igloo, <laughs> if you like. Pretty neat, a little expensive, but hey, think of all the uh, building time that you saved in uh, making that. Of course, you want to clear out the area around, because if there's anything existing, it will not replace it. It just builds around it. So, okay, next up, how to make a volcano. Right of Earth's Wrath. Now, it sounds really cool. It's not as impressive as it may sound, uh, but there does need to be lava underneath. That doesn't spawn naturally in the world that I'm in, so I actually had to go underneath and put a bunch of lava down there. But you could do stone, magma cream, gold sword, and a tune stone that's charged. Or um, you can do cobblestone, magma cream, golden sword, and a bound waystone for a specific location. But you do have to have uh, altar power for that one. So it's a 7x7 infernal glyph here. And infernal glyph circle, excuse me. I'm going to toss those out and that. And one of those. Whoa. And you can see it raises up. And no matter what you do, it only is about this big. And it will have some lava in there. Ah! And often one side will melt away, sometimes it won't. Uh, this one here, I ended up breaking it and then just plugging it back up. Um, so it didn't flow at all. This one, as you just saw, flowed down one side. And this one flowed down all four sides. So it can have a little bit of random effect on it. But it's kind of cool. Right of Sky's Wrath. Get to call a focused lightning storm inside the circle. And that's a 7x7 seven seven white circle, so it's a very small area here. Uh, whoops. And it's just wooden sword, wood ash, and a bound waystone, so you can tell it what what uh, area, though. So it's actually going to be a 7x7 seven seven circle wherever the bound waystone would be. Now that's optional, that's why it's grayed out. Alter power, and so on. So wooden sword, wood ash, let me get some of that here. Let's see, wooden sword and wood ash. And I am actually inside that giant ice glue that we uh, just made, so I have no idea how this is going to perform with that in place. But hey, it just goes right through the icy dome. So there you go. Pretty darn cool. And it does actually start raining as well. Wow. And it only does it for about like 10 or so lightning strikes, maybe. Well, there you go. So keep in mind that the uh, rain it creates will probably also put it out, unless, of course, it's in an enclosure like this. This one is almost identical to the, to the last one. It's the same thing, but it's just outside of the circle. Now, it's not everything outside of the circle. It's basically an area around the outside of that circle. Once again, you can use a bound waystone, stone sword, and wood ash instead of wood sword. So let's do stone sword. And there we go. This time I'll stay inside. And you can see it will happen around me. There you go. Pretty neat. If you end up having a bound waystone for this stuff, you can really bring some people out. Hey, enough. Stop it. Right, everything up. Ah, I'm destroying things. Hey. So it should only last for about like 10 strikes or so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> on to the next fun one. Block out the sun. The right of total eclipse. Uh, it actually doesn't block the sun out, it just makes it nighttime. So a stone axe, quick line, and some altar power on a 7x7 seven seven small circle again. And I just happen to have spawned some in, look at that. And you can still see that it's daylight, right? Boom. And it's nighttime. Just like that. Pretty cool, if you need to do stuff at night, you can quickly change it to be so. I forgot to mention that you can actually do it with an attuned stone as well, instead of the ultra power option. Alright, 
This one is rather interesting, the right of broken earth. Um, and there's also the right of moving earth, uh, but let's do the first one here. Right of broken earth, part the earth, position of the foci controls the direction. This one is a bit dangerous. Um, I'm not gonna do it right here in the middle of where I've got all this stuff set up, so I'm gonna move a little bit further away. All right, here we are, back in the volcano area, and we're gonna put down this. It actually doesn't use any power, from what I understand. The right of broken earth, part the earth, position of foci, etc., etc. Seven by seven circle, and it just needs a brew of erosion. Now be careful, you don't want to throw this out, you actually want to just drop it, and then right click. And where I was just facing is a general area, or actually where the brew was, it's the general area that it actually creates a giant crevice that shoots out just like that. And let's do a few more, shall we? It didn't destroy the circle this time, so let's see, I'm going to do it over here this time. So you see it's on the like the left side here, the glyph. So it will actually shoot out in general in that direction. And as you can see, it actually kind of curls around. I've had a few like do all sorts of crazy, wacky directions here. Let's see if I can get it to actually hit one of these volcanoes. Yeah, I think it just goes along the normal landscape. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's actually going to destroy the uh, volcano itself. Oh, and the circle has been destroyed. The right of moving earth. This one is probably one of my favorites. It's a brew of sprouting, cactus gunpowder, and a bound waystone so you can tell it where. But there are several variants on this one. Now, the size of the circle plus one or two squares is actually going to be the, um, the, area that is going to be risen up out of the ground. So you can actually get an 11 by 11 and a 15 by 15 as well, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, so let's just start off with this one, shall we? The thing is you have to remember is that if you use this or bigger circles, if you've got structures on there, it will actually move the structures up with it, but you have to have the glyphs in place. Enough about that. Let's get this thing going doesn't require any power, just ingredients. Brew of sprouting, cactus, and gunpowder for the 7x7. Seven seven. And it changes ingredients for each one. Now you see it raises it up about, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 blocks. So if I add more, it will raise it again. And it leaves remnant blocks floating in between to look like the stuff is actually like falling off of it and so on. Pretty cool. Now, if I were standing on here, whoops, I ended that too so soon. If I'm standing on here, I'll raise up with it. Whoop, there we go. And you can see, you can just keep on raising it up and up and up the more ingredients you add to it. And, of course, the ingredients change depending upon the size you do. So you see cactus gunpowder, cactus redstone, glowstone dust, and so on. I messed around a little bit. I used uh, an 11 by 11, and then I raised the center out of it with a 7 by 7. Uh, I also ended up, um, oh, where is it? There we go. I did one with uh, water on it, and it actually brought the water up. And out the side, it did not flow until I did a block update. Like, I put a block on the side there, and then the water started flowing back out again. But if you do it on flowing water, um, no guarantees it's going to work 100% the way that you expect. But I did actually raise it with a chest in place. And these items that I had in here stayed with it. So that's pretty cool that it keeps inventories as it moves it up. And, of course, I grew these afterwards just because I was having fun with the brew of sprouting. <laughs> They are kind of fun. All right, sorry, getting distracted. All right, the next one, right of broiling. Cooks any food placed in the circle, may overcook some food. Blaze rod, wood, ash, and coal, ultra power, and it's a infernal circle of seven by seven. I've already got those here, and I have a whole stack of beef. So let's just drop the whole stack, try cooking it, and see what happens. Whoosh instantaneously cooked 
59 steak and 5 charcoal. So you see I actually got a decent amount of charcoal back um, and a lot of steak in no time. You did not have to sit there and wait for hours while your vanilla Minecraft oven or furnace ends up cooking these things at, you know, 8 pieces per coal. Instead, you just toss those in and it's good to go. I did forget to mention, you can use an attuned stone. All right, the right of fertility. This one I accidentally tried out in this world at one point and I messed up a large area that I did not want fertile, to s so to say. So I'm gonna go over to another area and we can cast this in there and you can see the effects that it will have. All right, back in a sec. All right, this looks like a good, uh, good enough place. It's not too far from our uh, icy dome that we just created. So I'm gonna start off with the circle and then we're gonna toss in a bunch of ingredients. Let's see, Tandis Extremis, Bone Meal, Hint of Rebirth, Diamond Vapor, Quick Lime, Gypsum, whoops, and one Charged Attuned Stone. Now, this is just one of two recipes. There's another one that uses the altar, um, but, well, you'll see why I chose not to do the altar here in a second. And there you go, fertile ground. <laughs> and it just spreads out in a very, very large area. It essentially adds a single bone meal effect, maybe a double, to this entire area. It's pretty huge. Now, if you have a ton of crops, that is pretty awesome. And it will actually um, do this for all of those as well. I have used it on crops, and it will grow them. But uh, yeah, as you can tell over here by the circle, I accidentally uh, used that <laughs> in the uh, one of the main circles here. But anyway, moving on. All right, the next one, the right of nature's power. Release nature on a barren area with a brew of sprouting, a whole bunch of saplings of every single type. And this looks pretty barren enough to me. Of course, this was... Uh, done by another ritual which I'll show you in a second but let's see what we can do here shall we all right so let's see I don't want to do it right in the center so I'll do it a little bit off here we have the circle which is 11 by 11 white Rowan alder hawthorn oak spruce and birch saplings charged a tombstone and a brew of sprouting so first things first let's put this right there and drop one of each of these and let's see what we get now you'll notice it slowly works its way out it's eliminating some of the sand, replacing it with grass, planting melons, pumpkins, different items of that nature, and it just keeps on going. You see, it's still got particle effects going on here. So as long as those particles are going, it's still giving the uh, nature effect. So this could be a really good use, if you like, to uh, Try and create your own little grove, grotto, or so to speak. And uh, I'll come back when this thing's done. Uh, or, but yeah, we'll just move on to the next one, and then we'll check on this in a few. Next is the right of the forest, where you can grow a forest. Uh, it says replace the sapling for the desired type. That refers to the oak sapling here. Now I have, uh, I believe it's alder sapling. Yes, I have alder saplings in this case. A uh, wicker bundle, a brew of sprouting, and twig and a bound waystone so you could actually choose the location that you want it to be but as I am not using one we're just going to use an altar that I have set up nearby and for those that don't know a wicker bundle is a whole bunch of different saplings together just basically nine saplings will make a wicker bundle so let's drop these down one two three four and let's back up 
And just like the previous one, it's going to slowly start spreading out a forest of trees based on the alder sapling. So we're going to let that go, and I will show you the results of that one at the end as well. All right, here we are back at the original uh, right here that we had. And you can see it uh, made this nice little forest in a circle around here. Did several, oh, there you go, witchery uh, plants and took out a whole bunch of, not all, but took out a whole bunch of the sand that was in this area. Did a little bit of bone mealing, some more saplings, so therefore this could grow to be even more. But you'll see all sorts of random stuff, melons uh, and pumpkins and so on. So yeah, it's pretty good. If you put an altar down in the middle of this, you'd probably get a pretty decent reading on it. Let's see here. Just because of the sheer quantity of stuff. So yeah, 1841 with no modifiers. So that's pretty good, just because you've got a whole lot of stuff around here. So that's pretty neat. Now, let's go check on the other one. Here we go. Not quite as impressive. But you can see it just randomly dotted a bunch of those saplings around and instantly grew them. So you did not need to use bone meal in this case. Um, but it did require a few more saplings than one might have needed. So it's just kind of a cool effect. Uh, you can also repeat that with several other saplings as well. See if you can get yourself uh, a diff uh, several different forests mixed together. find it quite interesting. Okay. This last one here makes nearby land infertile and causes sickness. This is the Curse of Blight. This also will make people nauseous for like one or two minutes that are in the affected area. Uh, it's a charged attuned stone, redstone soup, reek of misfortune, fermented spider eye, glycerine melon, glistering melon, rotten flesh, and one diamond. Now, you would think that this would be could be devastating and in my opinion it, it can be um, I had performed it here and essentially what was nice green normal area like this here it interspersed sand removed a lot of the excess uh, plants replaced crops with dead bushes and sand for the uh, fertile ground at random and it also infected some villagers uh, with some illness. Now, I will do uh, one or two more things real quick just to show you that uh, before we end up uh, wrapping up. All right, here we are. And to demonstrate the infection, I have the brew of infection, which the recipe is toe of frog, creeper heart, a wormy apple, which is rotten flesh, an apple, and sugar. Belladonna, Rotten Flesh, and Mutandus. Gets you three brews of infection. And what do they do? Well, you see, I have stone bricks here, right? Let me place that. I have regular stone bricks. No big deal. No. So, if I use this, brew of infection on it, they actually become special. When I break it, hey, there are silverfish running around. Let's see the one go. Or as I like to call them, Jeffries. So, it's not just that effect. To demonstrate how it works on villagers. Whoops. Yeah. Some of them, they will turn... Uh, whoops. Here, let's... Uh, <laughs> into zombies. Other ones, they will turn into like this mutated effect where they look kind of like uh, they have no face. But yeah, essentially it's the zombie plague infection thing. There you go. And it, it turns the villagers into villager zombies. Well, that about covers everything for today's episode. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. And until next time...
See you.